VUI is a compact conversational on-device speech model built around a Llama-based transformer architecture that predicts audio tokens. In this video, we are going to install one of the variant of this model and we will check it out. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. This model and its release includes several checkpoints. One is VUI.base which is trained on 40,000 hours of conversations and then we have VUI.abraham for single speaker context aware responses and then we have VUI.cohost for two speaker interactions and that is what we are going to install in this video. This model is powered by Flock Audio Tokenizer which is a derivative of Descript Audio Codec. VUI compresses audio to 21.53 Hz token resolution that enables efficient inference. I'm going to talk a bit more about its training and stuff but for now let's get it installed. I'm going to use this Ubuntu system. I have this GPU card NVIDIA RTX A6000 with 48 GB of VRAM. Let me create a virtual environment with Coda. If you are looking to rent a GPU or VM on very very affordable prices you can find the link to their website in video's description with a discount coupon code of 50% for range of GPU so please do check them out. Next let's git clone the repo of VUI and that is also done. I am going to use uh, Python's package manager UV in order to get this thing installed and I have this recent a version of UV present. For that, all you need to do is to run this following command from the root of the repo and it is going to install it. Okay, so it says that it cannot um, use 3.12. So if you remember, I created my virtual environment with 3, Python 3.11. So all I need to do is to just upgrade to 3. Python 3.12 and this should work. So let me quickly do that. So after deleting that environment, all I am doing, I'm just using Python 3.12. While that happens, let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video, who are Camel AI. Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws with applications in data generation, task automation, and world simulation. And the new environment is created. Now let's run that UV command again. And this time it is working fine. So let's wait for it to finish. Should not take too long. And while it happens, let's also talk a bit more about this model. So the thing is that they have trained this model by just using two RTX 4090 GPU cards. That's it. And this model also supports basic voice cloning and integrates voice activity detection to trim silences, uh, although with some latency trade-off. While hallucinations are acknowledged in this model, so this is very good that they have acknowledged that there are hallucinations, the model serves as a strong proof of concept for lightweight offline conversational agent built with open source components like Whisper and AudioCraft. So I would suggest to not to use this model in a production environment just use it as a proof of concept and if you're looking to build something for production just fine-tune this model from the base of course and everything is installed now we can launch our gradio demo with this python demo.py and the first time when you run it it downloads all the models and the model is now running at our local host at port 7860. Let me take you there and launch it. There you go. And as you can see that this comes preloaded with one of the examples. And here our co-host model is loaded and it also only shows me co-host model. And then it also confirms that it is loaded. And then you can see that in this um, text box, we have two speaker conversation which is happening which is a pod style podcast style dialogue where two speakers Alex and Jamie are introducing a discussion on how AI is transforming customer service and this script includes these annotations like breath and laugh and hesitate which suggests the model supports exp expressive speech synthesis with non-verbal cues.
So this is a generated audio. So let me play it for you. Well, welcome to Fluxions, the podcast where we uh, explore how technology is shaping the world around us. I'm your host, Alex. And I'm Jamie. Um, today, we're diving into it topic that's transforming customer service uh voice technology for we've talks uh and okay and uh, i'm actually running it in my um virtual environment so there might be some discrepancy without you so what i'm going to do because i'm going to now generate my own and then maybe i will play them in the browser instead of here so that we could fairly judge the quality of the output and here is a prompt which I'm going to test. As you can see that there are two speakers here. And in this one, we are also using some warm, personal and subtle cues to express emotion and pacing. So let's see if a uh, model can express that. I'm just going to click on generate speech on the right hand side. Not a generated speech, sorry. Let's click here. Okay, it is generating. Let's check the VRAM consumption. So it is consuming just over three gig of VRAM, which is not bad at all. Well, no, it, it has jumped to four. Okay, so four is the notes. total. I'm Emma. I am Liam. Tonight's question: When did you know it was love? The moment you handed me that book and smiled like you already knew me. <laughs> I remember you said I might like Naruda better. And you did. That was the start of us. It's wild how something so small can change everything. And now we're here telling our story. <laughs> Love's got a funny way of finding us, huh? Always. So pretty good. I was intending to move it to my browser, but I think this was pretty good. Um, it could not do giggle. I'm also just, you know, that uh, the way I do it, I'm just trying to push the limits. I'm also adding some of the other emotions. Some of it, it understands, some of them not, but uh, it did well around laugh and giggle. The scent. Um, the accent is also quite good too, by the way. I don't think so we can change it. Let me check in the advanced setting. Now, these are all the hyperparameters. But of course, we can change the length of audio to something like this in seconds. So around two minutes, I would say we can go. So I'm just going to keep it here. Rest, I will leave it as is. Okay, let's try out another one. Okay, next up, I'm using this example of some sci-fi mystery. So let me generate the speech. It is a bit longer. So let's see how long does it take. I'm just going to let it run so that you would also see how long does it take. It is fairly quick. I mean, just using over 4 gig of VRAM and the speed looks pretty decent. So for two minute audio, let's see how long does it take. Almost there, I believe. Okay, so it has generated the audio. Now, instead of playing here, let me play it in the browser. Okay, so this is the audio. Let me play it for you. Welcome to Signal Unknown, where we decode the cosmos. I'm Nova. And I'm Dr. Orion. Tonight, we're analyzing the transmission recovered from deep orbit sector 7G. The signal started looping at the signal started looping at exactly 3.14 a.m. UTC, repeating the phrase, we are still here. But no crew was ever registered on that vessel. <laughs> well, so the logs claim. What's stranger? The voice it matches Commander Lillens who vanished five years ago. Could be a hoax. Could be something else. A warning. Or a call for help. That's it. So even if I give it, uh, like... Uh... Two minutes. It has just finished it. Uh, I think for a few seconds. But it, it was able. Could be to a do... hoax. Could be something else. Okay. Aries, what did it take today? Dida, look at me. Your call could be something else. A warning. Or a call for help. Either way, we're not alone. Next week, we play the full recording. Until then, keep your comms open. And your lights on. Okay, it has done some of it, but not all of it. And it, it has also skipped some of it. So I think, as I said, it is just a proof of concept. Uh, needs a lot of fine tuning, I believe. But still a good effort. 
let me know what do you think about uh, this vui we have seen of course way way better conversational speech models on the channel and if you're interested just start with cs7 you should be able to find heaps of them as i said earlier i think the best use case of this model is to use the base model and fine tune, fine tune it on your own data that's it please uh, like the video if you think uh, you enjoyed it and if you haven't already subscribed please do subscribe as it helps a lot thank you for watching